Okay, so um, today is going to be uh, what we're doing here. This is the uh, second clip, video, whatever you want to call it, in a um, series on the Kawa Nagura, the Kawashiro Nagura. Um, going to focus on the authentic Asano Stamp Nagura. Um, these are really what you want to work with. I'm not saying that anything that isn't stamped, you know, like you see here, can't be good. It's just that when you buy these Nagur, if you look for the ones that have been stamped and graded at the mine in I, uh, Aichi uh, Prefecture, the Macau mine, um, you're in a better place. You're in a better starting place. So uh, today is Botan, and we're going to review um, what's going on here with this particular stone. Now, um, in the last video I mentioned, you know, uh, in the mine, you have uh, layers, strata, we call them. Each strata has a name. There's a whole bunch of them in there. Uh, there's only four that we use when we hone razors. That's Botan, Tenju, Majiro, Koma. Well, I shouldn't say there's only four that we use. Um, there's also Ban and Atsu. If you can find it, you can use them as well, although they were never really predominantly used for uh, sharpening razors. Uh, they could be, but they're rare. You don't see them too often. The mine has been closed since the 70s. Anything that you find on the market now is being um, taken from uh, stone that was either laying around in piles or in lockers. For a long time, they stored stone uh, for a number of reasons. Um, so stone, uh, like say, if it came on the market and you see it online, uh, it could have been cut, you know, a couple of months ago. But the host stone, the mother block, that might have been cut, you know, way long ago. Right? Um, what that means, at the end of the day, is uh, any bow tent that you buy could be different than any other bow tent. <laughs> Come out of different holes in the ground, different times, and, you know, they're stone, they're natural stone. Things vary. Anyway, so, right here we have a uh, typical piece, maybe this is like 70 grams or something like that. Um, the grade stamp here. This is a Tokyo, which means it's in a regular shape and that there is some modeling and some striping going on. You can see a little bit up in here. This is lacquered. I seal the sides and tops of the stones. I seal the top to protect the stamps. I seal the sides so I don't get uh, flakes and chips falling into the slurry. Uh, I number stuff. Uh, I have a honeycomb of uh, stone in drawers and um, everything has to be numbered so I can find it, so I can pair it up uh, with other stones. And Anyway, that's my own little system. I have the stones I use and I have the stones that I might use once I get them paired up and that's how it goes. It's my own little private Idaho. Anyway, so this is Botan. Now, Botan is actually two layers of Botan. Uh, regular botan, if you want to call it that, right? And you have yay botan, right? Now, uh, the stamps here, you know, uh, this is the uh, authentic uh, German Macau Shiro Nagur stamp here. It means it came out of like, you know, that mine. Uh, this is the uh, Nagayuki Asano stamp. That means it's been through uh, the process of being tested and graded, evaluated, so on and so forth. Uh, this here, this is the actual uh, strata stamp. This tells you that this is Ye Botan. And you can see the difference here in the characters. All right. And then over here we have the grade stamp, and it's Betsy Daiju, which is predominantly square and predominantly white. So, what's the difference? Well, the difference is uh, that yay 
<clears throat> historically, yay, uh, there's more coarse than a regular bow tan. Bow tan is still the coarsest of the Nagura that we use. Um, but out of these two stones here, the yay bow tan is notably coarser, it's faster. Um, it will not refine to the point that regular bow tan will, which is kind of the way it is. Uh, you can see this stone here has, uh, like if you're thinking this is skin, it's not skin. All right. Uh, what this is, is a sand layer. Both seams of Botan are known to um, have sand running through them, like a line. Uh, don't freak out. Not every line in Botan means like there's sand in it, but it does happen. Now, in Japan, this is a known thing. It's nothing to freak out over. Uh, the sand layers, the way they cut the stone, you know, and all that, the sand layers run basically uh, parallel to the working surface. When you get to that point where it's close, you don't mess around, you just lap through it. If you soak the stone, it can split apart. I have a photo of that someplace. I might uh, drop it into. And then you can just lap out both sides and then use that as two stones. If the sand gets into your slurry, you're kind of dead in the water. So you want to avoid that. It will tear up your blade. It will ruin your day. Now, sometimes it's not just a layer, especially with yet. See this little pocket here? There was like a little nest of nasties in there, a little sand inclusion. This particular piece is extremely rare. It's extremely old. Um, it's extremely clean for Ye. Um, but it did have that pocket in it. And, uh, you know, what they do in Japan, and, and is what I did. You know, um, I took this thing here. It's like a carbide tip scribe, right? And you just gouge it out. Okay. Uh, if these kinds of things bother you, and it's fine if it does, because it seems weird. Um, don't use these stones, because those things go on. But that's how they're used, you know? Uh, typically, I don't want to have this in a working surface, because uh, it can flake out and get into my slurry. But because I use this only for heavy work, and it really doesn't matter too much, because I'm going to follow it up with enough stone to smooth it out. And eventually, it'll be lap through or worn through and uh, won't bother me if i was really maniacal i would put a dot of lacquer in there and seal it up but it's just not worth it honestly i have a couple of pieces of yay this one sits in my box as a collector's piece because um betsu daiju is the most highly coveted um shape um you know the square thing so I just kind of like leave it over there um, in the box and take it out every now and then. Now, those size pieces we see all the time. They come bigger. You know, you can get Botan up to 300 grams in a chunk, uh, sometimes more. They also come as bench stones. The Toishi. Botan. You hone right on this. Um, Someone working on uh, nice big blades, cutlery, would love a stone like this. Uh, they're very rare. Um, authentic ones are really rare. You can find unstamped Nagura out there in uh, bigger pieces. Uh, most of the time, they're not perfect rectangles. And if you know, even this one has two clipped corners. Uh, I've had this for a long time. It's one of my favorite stones. I love working on it. I use it as a bevel setter. It's a little slow for that, but. I don't care. I don't hone for speed. I don't hone for money. I don't hone other people's razors. So, um, my last bevel set on this razor um, took me 45 minutes, and that's what reprofiling. And that's not too bad, you know. And the nice thing is, is like I don't need a 3K and a 5K after that, you know. Um, well, I did that one all natural. But if I was using sense, I, I don't need it because I'm already there. 
you know, a little dusty. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I uh, use this sparingly because the stamps are real close and the piece is very rare. And um, don't want to beat up on it too much. I have a couple of large pieces that I can hone on, but out of all the Toishi and the Culpa I have, this one's my favorite. Now, just mentioned Culpa. It is a Culpa. What's a Culpa? Culpa is an uneven shaped stone. Kind of wide, doesn't really fit on camera too well. Um, both hand stamp, sat on stuff. See the top is a little mottled, the white is a little brighter, it doesn't have any of the dark spots in it. Um, yeah, the dark spots like down here. Um, these aren't really inclusions. Uh, what they are is um, water seepage through the ground, leaves behind mineral traces, stuff like that. Um, it's innocuous, doesn't affect your honing. You know, uh, some have it, some don't. This one does not, but it does have the orange. Um, it's an uneven shape. Um, you have, uh, yeah, Tokyo Jew, or, yeah, Tokyo Jew, or, yeah, I think it's, it's not really striped, it's just modeled. Um, kind of hard to really pin this one down. I'm going to put this down, though, as, uh, what it should have been is uh, uneven shape and not all white, so that would make it a uh, Tokyo, but it's carrying a um, Betsu uh, Daiju stamp. And the mind, they make up their minds like that. Um, this is uh, close <laughs> to being square. If you hunt around, you'll find more copa out there and this obviously is um, very irregular and very marked up and very colorful with a lot of red in it you know and this one is stamped appropriately as um Tokyo. so anyway you have a couple of different form factors out there you have stand in the girl you have the copa you have the toishi and all of the Nagura are cut similarly. In other words, you have different form factors to work with. It gets confusing because you think Nagura is like this little tank to make slurry with, and then you have Nagura that you make slurry on, but you use Nagura to make slurry. Um, it's because in this case, the stone is called Nagura, as opposed to, like say, Domo Nagura, which is cut from LSA. Anyway. So, using it, what do you do? Well, it's fairly simple. You know, um, I have a honing regimen on my website that I tell people, you know, read and do. And if you do, uh, follow the instructions. I mean, to the letter, not in the middle. You make shit up and come up with like 10 new things because you were on a shaving farm and some guy told you to like, I don't know, spray the hone down with glycerin and then... Uh, Go wave a rubber chicken over your head. Don't do that. Follow the instructions because everyone who has gets it. I'm not saying it's perfect, but I'm saying it works. So here you have an Osedo. This uh, piece is a weirdo thing. It's got like black range in it. It's got Sue. I don't think it's sweeter. I'm not sure what it is. There's something else going on in here. Uh, this section of the stone right there never feels smooth. I don't know what the story is. I use it for doing heavy, heavy work on heavier blades most of the time. Um, but I can also use it <coughs> on razors. And it doesn't, uh, I don't have, I don't suffer any ill effects. And I can't figure out how that's possible with the roughness in the middle of the stone. But, you know, I'll leave, uh, I'll let the scientists figure it out. I'm going to go get out there scanning electron microscopes and they can go have a circle jerk on a shaving form. Me, I'd rather home. So, yeah, the stuff's moving. Put a little water down there, make it stick a little bit. Spray it in. Make it slurry. Uh, 
Now some boat tanners saw some are hot. You can buy a striped one, it can be soft, and you can buy a white one, it can be hot. The reverse can be true. You can see that this is pulling up some of the stone. This is a hard stone. This is also a coarse stone. All right, so the two things together are going to bring up some of the uh, oh, I said, oh. so there's nothing to get freaked out over. That's a lot of slurry for what I'm going to do here today because I don't really want to get too deep into it. Let me go wash that off because it's going to stain this blue. Majiros. Yeah, they're in Majiro that, like, when they get wet, they turn blue. <laughs> they're very special. I don't know what the story is there, but they're real cool, and every one of them has been an absolute gem. So anyway, um, and like I said, e each botan is different. It's not a recipe. It's not like adding sugar to, you know, flour to bake a cake, where you can go buy Domino sugar or store brand sugar or some other crap. That says sugar on the box, and you know, you're kind of just gonna have the same result. Not true with Nagura. It's a natural stone, and they're they're all different. Now, sometimes the differences don't mean much. Sometimes they mean all the difference in the world. Just guide this along here. I don't know if you can hear that. Slurry here is very crunchy, um, <clears throat> granular, very granular. There's a Wall Street pipe, I set the bevel on it. So anything I do here with this, going forward from that point, which was uh, set on a uh, 1K. <clears throat> All right. So I have this really active abrasive slurry on top of this crazy stone. And I tell you, it's a little disarming. Well, it can be disarming. I'm used to it because I know what it's going to do. What I'm trying to say is if you just started out and you never honed on this stuff before and you pick this up, you'd be like, what the hell is going on? Well, what the hell is going on is little tiny bits of quartz are eating away little tiny bits of steel. In this Nagura, the slurry is kind of, what's the word, active. Particle count is high, and the particle size is large. So it kind of feels a little like I'm dragging a blade along a gravel road. Not that bad, but trying to make a point. Now, just with these strokes that I've done here, it's smoothed out a lot. It tells me the slurry is starting to do what slurry does. We like to say that the slurry is breaking down. But then you have all these guys on the internet Facebook groups and you know, shaving farms that, you know, they need uh, scientific data to prove that that happens. And I don't feel like giving them ammunition to start a fight with me. So whatever the slurry is doing is whatever the slurry is doing. It feels like it's acting funny. It feels like it could be breaking down or dulling or something. It's a lot smoother already. Now, my pressure here is, you can't tell, but there's a lot of pressure, right? I'm at the point where if I push any more, torque any more, I'm going to twist the blade. And if you twist the blade or you push down too much, what happens is you can either dig the edge down into the stone too much, or you can actually, depends on the blade, you can actually wind up in a way kind of pulling it up. It's no good. So you want to have pressure. You want to have firm pressure. You don't want to have crazy pressure. 
you do not want to distort the shape of the blade. If the blade isn't doing what you want it to do, you can roll, which is kind of like that, okay? See, you start here with the blade up, and as you progress, you come through, and you wind up like that. That's if you have a warp. You don't have a warp, you can do that if you want to smile on the blade, but you got to figure out what you want to do. The rolling stroke is a necessity with a warp blade most of the time. Right. Here I'm pretty good, I really don't need to have rolled too much, just a little bit. Right. My undercut's okay. I don't want to keep going because it'll be like a three hour video. This is just a demonstration. So. <clears throat> if I was honing, let's say I said bevel 1K. I use a 1K uh, Chosera or I use the 1.5K Shapton Pro. Both very good stones. And I'm going to continue with Jane Ass from there. I got a hard Alicedo, hard finishing stone. And I go to about 10. When people ask me, how do I hone on Jane Ass? And they haven't done it before. I tell them, go 1K, 3K, 5K synth. <laughs> and then go to Bowtan, all right? The reason for that is um, it takes you a while to figure out Bowtan. If you start from 1K, most people are gonna under home and they're gonna come up with a crappy bevel. Well, I know, right now you're saying, but I thought I set the bevel at 1K. Well, you know, the bevel sets until about 5K. Sharpness occurs, um, sharpness is finish, the main sharpness development of it i hate that i gotta talk like this but if i don't like you know trolls come out of the woodwork um main sharpness bulk of your sharpness is developed uh, from one to five k <laughs> okay that's uh kind of been proven by a couple of people for even for one and read this paper on it i've seen it you can see it too you know just gotta look pay attention um, and clean this up. Now, maybe clean that off too. So, stone is essentially clean. And I might want to use this bow tan instead. Okay. And this one's harder. It's also smoother. Feedback when making slurry, and yes, this feedback when you make slurry, and it's something you should pay attention to because it'll tell you a lot about your stone. All right, slurry feels a little pastier, like I said, a little smoother. And I know it, I can cheat, I can say, Well, it's finer because I've used this a lot and I've used the A a lot too, but uh, until you use them, you don't know, you know. <clears throat> so, we got this one out. This is your regular bow tie. Okay. I don't know how good the mic in this camera is. Uh, well, it's my phone actually. It's one of my, it's an old phone. Um, but, to me, it's less noisy. The feel is less um, gravelly, less bumply, you know? Something you might want to consider doing when you're hauling is moving your stone around. The way you move the wear, distribute the wear more evenly. I mean, I don't do it too much on camera because I'm thinking of a million things. I don't write out a script, I just, you know, speak off the top of my head. Uh huh. So, move the stone around, get a little bit better action, a little less wear localized in one place. You know. Yeah, the feedback here is like a lot more friendly. Okay, from experience, I can tell you it's also slower. And it's slower in the sense that it's not as coarse. But. It's still pretty fast for a bow tie. Now the general consensus 
is that striped bow tie is going to be faster than white bow tie. And I really don't know how I feel about that statement because I've had a mixture of everything here. If I showed you my Nagura drawer, you'd be like, what's wrong with you? Um, I've had really fast and really slow white, and I've had really fast and really so slow striped. I've had soft and hard striped and white. So picking out a stone visually. I know there are guys that are like, I can spot a Nakayama right now. No, you can't, okay? You can do politics to prove that to people, but it's bullshit, right? You got to try to stone. The only way to know your stone is to work with it. If you see a stone on the internet, on a photo, and you might be able to figure out some stuff, but probably not enough to like make work buying it like a sensible decision. The guy you're buying it from hasn't honed on that stone. And he only knows what he got from either lapping it or like, I don't know, sniffing it in his uh, warehouse inventory room. And you can pick up some stuff by handling, but you don't pick it all up. It is what it is. In Japan, you go to a store, you try the stuff. The internet, you buy a stone, you got to deal with it. Some people take them back. It's kind of like, you know, I have a stone here if, if I was selling this and I'm not... I could tell whoever was buying it everything about it, okay? And when he got it, that's what it would be. And if he got it and he didn't think what I said was right, then he's a knucklehead because I know my stones. Some things are interpretive, subjective. I'll let you know about that. But uh, when it comes down to it, you know, stuff that's objective, hard, soft, fast, slow, whatever, you know, that I know. I don't think there's any stone here that I haven't put 10 or 12 blades over and shave with. <coughs> but, you know, whatever, it doesn't matter. <coughs> stones are stones. You know, you got a stone like this, copper, or a big Nagura, depending on how you look at it. You know, try not to wipe out my numbers. See? Boom. Like, instant slurry. Uh, that's so cool. This stone is fast. Way fast. Okay. This is great for setting bevels even though it's so small. You can hear like completely different feedback. All those little tiny itsy bitsy pieces of quartz that formed while the stone was going through its phases of turning from uh, mud into a um, shell and almost slate. I mean, they're close, but they're not slate. Um, all those little bits of quartz, they're in there and they're like cutting away at the steel and refining my edge. Out of everything here, that was the smoothest sensation and the most pleasant out of all. But when you have to do heavy lifting, you got to cut off a lot of steel. It's really not about like, you know, going to the prom. It is what it is. They are not uh, synthetic stones. Let me this off. <clears throat> they feel different. And of course, natural is going to feel coarse. Put a no more down here. It's like driving off a cobblestone. Now, some of them, like Hamakuzu, and so it's stuff like that, which really aren't as good as using a boat there. Um, oh, that other stone, Egorishi. Um, and they get pasty and muddy and stuff, and they cut, but eh, completely different action. You know, uh, these stones uh, from uh, Makawa, these Nagura, uh, have been around for a really long time. I don't know exactly how long. Uh, I know in the 1700s they were around. Um, that book, uh, what's it called? Uh, Rokan San Sai Zhu. Um, the uh, Sino Japanese Illustrated Encyclopedia, that's the uh, translation. Uh, they mention uh, three, uh, the best three stones 
for sharpening stuff, and one of them is uh, these stones from uh, Macau. Um, I don't suppose too many are still around from those days, but who knows? Uh, one of my coma uh, from Medjay period, that's pretty old, and we're talking way over 100 years. Um, actually, that stone could be from Edo. Um, and so you're asking how could a stone be old? How do you know if it's stamped? Well, what happened was back in the 60s, when Iwasaki got with um, Mr. Asano and developed the grading system, people who had these primo pieces in their collections, uh, you know, high-end uh, sword polishes and people who just collected the stones, they had stone, they knew it was from Makawa, they brought it and they would stamp it. And uh, they would put it back in their collections. And if you ever saw that big boat, uh, that big comber of mine, that's uh, one of them. I mean, you know, it doesn't make it like, you know, some really valuable stone, it just is what it is. Um, it's different than all my other comers, too, so it speaks to the older stones are different. Anyway, Botan. First stone in uh, progression for uh, working on razors. You can set bevels on them. I do not recommend that for new people because it's time consuming, it can be frustrating. Uh, if you want to learn how to do it, I could walk you through it, but uh, it takes time and it takes learning and it takes practice. Uh, you can't just sit down and hone on it like it's a synthetic. It doesn't work like that. Uh, there's a way to work the stone, there's a way to work the surface and the slurry and there's a cycle. Uh, otherwise you just wind up doing nothing. You get to a point real fast where it peters out and you're not really getting anything out of it. You really have to learn how to work the stone. But, set your bevel 1K, 3K, 5K, go to Botan and progress from there. Um, life's good, you know. Uh, people say, why bother? Well, to me, uh, the Nagura progression is uh, the path to uh, a lot of happiness for honing. It's also a, a really great edge. And uh, after honing all the blades that I've honed, I have never felt an edge from synthetics that feel like an edge done on naturals. And the bigger part of the progression done on naturals, the more of that feeling I got. Now this blade, start to finish. Came in like toast, reworked the profile, set the bevel, went all the way through all on naturals. And it's just so smooth. It's just never going to happen with a synthetic. Sorry. I'm not saying synthetic edges are bad. Because I use them. And I shave with them. Just talking about a comparison here. Um, it's important to try and get away from the uh, testosterone bullshit of the world of social media. Which is better, which is best. It's not about that. It's about what you like. It's about what you like to do. It's about what you like to work with. Uh, I work with Nagur. I'll be the first person to tell you it's not for everybody. I'll also be the first person to tell you that I'm happiest when I'm honing with them. Doesn't mean it's a rule, doesn't mean this is best. It just means it's what I like. You know, uh, if you ever get to try it, invest in it and, and go with it, I'm pretty sure you'll like it too. I haven't had anybody call me up and say, hey, you know, I'm honing on these JNATs and it sucks. I have never heard that. Never. Okay, I have heard that from synths, I have heard that from codicles, I have heard it from um, all types of stones. And most of the time, I got to tell you, I believe it's user error, but um, I've never heard it with JNATs. I've heard people say, hey, you know, I have a struggle in getting an edge that's better than a, what I get off a 12K synth. But after discussion, what I find is um, it really has to do with other factors. Okay, uh, it has to do with missing the bevel set and then trying to make it a, a JNAT edge and then compare it to a synth where the bevel was set there and then progressed and, you know, they're just more used to those stones. That's what I find. Anyway, uh, that's Botan. I'm sure I forgot something. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, post them in the uh, comment section below. All right, and that's it, Botan.